Hi guys, welcome to 3D Wonders. This is Pat. If you run a CNC shop and a customer walks in with a legacy part, your biggest cost isn't metal. It's the wasted time getting complex part like this turbine impeller ready for machining. First, we capture this part using Shining 3D's FreeScan Combo Metrology Scanner, deriving an accurate mesh data. The second part of the solution is Quick Surface for SolidWorks. It allows you to transform raw scan data into a perfectly editable parametric CAD file in hours, not days. In this demo, we'll walk through how a turbine impeller, one of the more complex parts to capture, can be transformed step-by-step step into a fully editable parametric model. You'll see how Quick Surface blends scan-based modeling with the familiar SolidWorks environment, making it easier to turn complex scan data into precise, editable CAD models. Let's dive in. First, let's create a new part file in SolidWorks. We'll import the STL file containing the scan turbine impeller. As you can see, the mesh data isn't aligned to the coordinate system. That's why our first step is alignment, so every feature we build is referenced correctly. We'll start by extracting a planar reference using the Extract Primitive tool. Next, we'll sketch a circle to define the part's central axis. Using Align by Reference, we select the planar face as Reference 1 and the circle center as Reference 2. Now the mesh is aligned to the coordinate system. This makes the modeling process much easier. We can delete the alignment references now since they're no longer needed. Let's define the center axis of the turbine impeller. Using the center axis, we generate an intersection with the mesh. With the outline function enabled, we capture the conceptual shape of the hub. From this intersection, we create a sketch for the hub. To speed things up, we'll use the Fit2D Primitive tool to convert intersections into lines, arcs, or other 2D geometry. Once the sketch is complete, we revolve it to form the impeller hub. To verify accuracy, run a comparison analysis between the solid model and the mesh data. Next, we build the outer profile of the blade using the intersection as our guide. We sketch along the blade's outer edge.
For the blade base, we create a partial revolve instead of a full 360 degrees, since only one blade is needed as the base feature. For the blade surface geometry, we use fit surface to create it. This is the fastest way to extract a freeform surface directly from the mesh. Select the blade area to extract as a freeform surface. In the property manager, set the surface smoothness to maximum for smooth surface results. This extracted surface will act as a cutting tool, so ensure it overlaps the solid body before cutting. Now we apply cut with surface to trim the solid with the fitted surface. Run a deviation check to confirm the blade surface closely matches the scan data. Repeat the same extraction and cut process to form the opposite blade surface. Add fillet to refine transitions and smooth the geometry. Pattern the blade around the hub to generate the complete set of blades. Perform a final deviation analysis on the blades. Overall deviation remains well within tolerance. Combine all blade bodies with the hub into a single solid body. For the top section, create a hexagon using standard sketching. And with that, the solid body of our turbine impeller is now complete. At this stage, you could move on to finishing touches and additional detailing. But for this demonstration, we'll conclude the modeling workflow here. And that our demonstration of the turbine impeller.
What we've seen is how scan data can be methodically converted into a precise parametric model. Quick Surface for SOLIDWORKS makes it faster and easier to reverse engineer even the most complex parts like turbine impellers. By combining scan-based modeling with powerful CAD features, you can go from mesh to solid with accuracy, efficiency, and confidence. To learn more about Quick Surface or request a free trial, visit 3dwonders.com. And don't forget to follow our channel for more reverse engineering tutorials and insights. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.